Hi guys, well we're out in the shop again today and uh, we're making some progress on the sawmill. As you can see, you have the guides attached to this thing. Got some belts on it and the adjuster set up. got the adjuster in here that's uh, that's working have clearances in our cover for that to operate this one nut down or it's a bolt down here that's a little tough to get at but you can reach it with a wrench so I guess that's gonna be the way it is this is what I came up with for the log clamp This is uh, one by two tubing. Looks like it's a 120 wall. And I cut these slots in it, drilled it, and cut it off with an abrasive wheel. And uh, the tube flared out at the top of it because there's always stress built into tube material. And uh, so that's why it looks the way it does. Um, but bolts will hold it together, so it's not a problem. Um, these slots have a function to them, so they are of a certain uh, distance to them. And on the opposite end, I have a piece of tube just welded on here. And this tube slides on the tube that will be mounted to the bed. I have these holes for bolts in there. I've got some tube standoffs. Put a notch in them just so they'd stay in place, but that's not really necessary. But uh, I'll have a bolt go through it and hold it onto the crossbars in the bed. And the way these work is there's enough slop in this tube here that when it leans back, it locks in pretty solid to the tube. That is uh, how that's going to function. Okay, this is the dog itself. I painted one side of it, but you can see the holes off center in it. This is half inch material, and I grabbed it off of a scrap pile because it was really close to what I wanted to use. So it's half inch thick there, and from the top down to the middle of the holes, about six inches. So six and a half inches overall. And the dog goes into the tube on the short side, or excuse me, on the long side notch. Okay, and the, the notch and the rounded off end on this dog has a function. It's It was intended just to allow it to only fall out that far. Otherwise, if you don't have it trapped somehow it's just going to continue to fall fall out this direction and just kind of be a pain in the butt to operate okay next we have the cam itself that will operate the dog and uh, I drew this line on here just to show that the hole set across from this point here this is the highest point on the cam so my handle ends up staying outward if I had run the hole over this direction the handle would have hit down against the tube and had been difficult to get your hand underneath of to release. So by clocking at this angle, my handle sticks out and I don't have any problem reaching it. One thing to consider when you're doing a cam is you want this high point to be where the dog's locked into the wood and held in place. And then you want to go just a little bit past center, um, which will end up keeping it in place. If you go too far, it'll start loosening up. If you're on this side, it could slip off. So it's important to make sure that high point is kind of the sweet spot for making it work. I did weld some tube onto the base of it for a handle. It seems to be easier to grab on and added some leverage to it.
So the parts are held together in there with a couple of hex head caps or hex screws. And uh, I've got these self-locking nuts on them. Once they're cinched down, they won't fall apart and probably even use it to adjust it a little bit for tension so that the parts stay kind of where you want them to go. But you can see that the, at this point you're on the lowest part of the cam so the dog's pretty much back all the way in and then as you actuate it the dog goes out. Okay, I'm putting the parts on the outside of the tube just so you can see how they operate. At this point, the handle would start hitting the notch that's in the tube and it wouldn't be able to go down any further. It's already maxed out on the cam as far as pushing the dog, so it's everything's locked where it would be right now. This would be the highest amount of force that it could exert. You lift it up and it releases the dog. Okay, so here's the assembly attached to uh, one of the crossbars on the bed of the saw. And uh, it slides along here, obviously, to allow accommodations for different sized logs. And uh, because this part right here can rock when it's pushed back this is difficult to move which is just the way you want it to work it didn't tighten this up yet but gets you the idea all right since i don't have any uh logs laying around here at the moment uh i'm just gonna have to imagine this is some kind of wood that we're gonna saw um it's got an old landscaping timber and piece of two by here but basically just pushing the the dog up to the work and then pushing this bottom in pull down the handle and that locks things into place and it makes that pretty tight with just very little force and if I lift the handle up a little bit higher That puts considerable force on it there. Well, I say I'd show a breakdown of this uh, locking handle that I did. It's got a set screw in here that can be adjusted so that it fits into the holes on the plate that's on the machine. There's a there's a spring that goes over that. And then I have this part here, which actually attaches it to the handle and allows it to pivot. I've got that uh, pin welded in here. And that spring is sandwiched in between the pin and the set screw. And that set screw will have a little jam nut on it to lock it in place. jam nut on that be tightened up so it won't come loose so you can see how this thing's spring loaded and until it's attached to the shaft on the lifting jack uh, once once that's in place then it sets flush for the handle on this end I drilled and tapped the end of a half inch bolt and also drilled and tapped this end of it
then I drilled a piece of aluminum through and I put a hole in it or a counter bore for a socket head cap screw which didn't need to be done that way but just the way I do things I guess. Okay, so it makes a nice spinning handle on that, makes it easy to turn. There's a hole drilled through this uh, shaft. The handle goes on it. And a little roll pin goes through the top of that. With the handle installed, that set screw that's on this end down here fits into these holes. This part right here rocks because of that spring in here. It's pivoting on this part here. And uh, so you can push in on it, turn it to where you want your next cut to be, and then drop that uh, set screw into one of the holes. And that locks it in place so it can't move. If you watched the last video, I built these uh, guides with the rollers on them. Rollers from cook saws, they're, they're hardened, so good part to use. Had to figure out a mount for this, so I welded to the bottom of uh, where the bearing flange is down in here, and it's bolted on, and I still need to add a quarter inch shim under it, because I'm going to push the guides downward to the blade so that it puts some pressure against them. And then over on this side we have this mounted on a sliding rail. And I'll show you what that looks like on the other side. That gets me about 12 inches of travel, about halfway across. Um, I don't think I need anything really shorter than that, but I guess we'll find out. These are some uh, V roller bearings. Uh, these two at the top are just bolted in straight with some uh, shoulder bolts that I had laying around. And then down on the bottom here, this roller here, there's a cap screw that I cut off so it's less than the thickness of this plate, it's 3 8 plate, and uh, I flattened off the top of it and drilled a hole off center in the middle of it. That's what this uh, shoulder bolt goes into. So when you rotate this nut head right here, this travels in an orbital pattern so you can tighten it up against the bar up there. This lets you set whatever amount of tension to it that you want and I'll be adding some kind of a ball bearing in a spring assembly to the back side of this thing so that it presses up against the dimples in this bar on the other side so the other side will have a series of holes along in here and uh, when you push and pull on that bar it'll stop into each one of those dimples with the ball bearing and that's what will hold it in position. Uh, handle, I just bolted a piece of aluminum onto the end of it. One important thing I found out about this, I originally sunk my screw in and there was no stop for that and the first try out I pushed it completely through the bearing so if anybody's building something like this remember to incorporate some kind of a stop in that. Now we're making some progress on the blade covers. There are barrel bottoms that have been cut off. Ended up going about three and a half inches wide. But I still have to come up with uh, some kind of a piece to go across the middle to cover up the drive wheels and the open blade up there. 
one other project that needed to be done. I got a muffler from Surplus Center. It was from a 22 horse engine of some sort, but the tubes on it, no way were going to fit my engine, and that's the problem. Um, they don't make too many mufflers for this engine. It's a pretty old engine and they're unique to what they get used in, so it probably wouldn't fit anyway. The muffler was gonna have to fit in between the engine and this top crossbar. So I had to build a custom muffler to fit in there. That's what the muffler is gonna look like installed. I had to move and alter the inlets to it. And then I also had to rotate this opposite direction so it was sticking down. Got a piece of uh, I-beam left over from our uh, garage build, so you can go look at that video if you want to, but uh, with some salvaged I-beams that we got for building our garage. And I cut off a piece of that, and now I have a place to mount the fuel tank. This uh, engine has a fuel pump on it, so I can just go ahead and drill a hole through the top of the filler here and drop a tube down inside. Okay, one more thing going for the project is going to be this uh, tank for a coolant system. And this is a fuel tank that I got from a hot rod shop. And it came with these fancy brackets. And I think I'll mount that right up here. It's not going to be the easiest thing to put water into, but I guess you can lift something up there and fill it or pump it up there. So I just have to figure out how I'm going to uh, attach that bracket up here and then that'll be ready to go on. So we're starting to get down to the finish line on this thing. This is not for tensioning the blade and uh, turning it temporarily with a wrench. I'll get a handle on it to pull it over here pretty soon. I want to say thank you to all you people that have uh, subscribed recently to our channel. And uh, I hope anybody that's watching this would also subscribe. Um, it makes it feel like it's worthwhile. And uh, stay in tune with what we're doing um, hopefully we we'll get this thing done pretty soon uh, i want to run a test log through it and then we'll get the thing loaded up on the trailer with some of our other equipment and get it hauled out to the mountain thanks for watching